Amber Romans grew up on a dairy farm in Brooks, Alberta. She studied history and education at the University of Lethbridge, going on to obtain her master's in Russian history at the University of Alberta. Joining our community almost 10 years ago, Amber acts as our senior school academic coordinator in addition to teaching anthropology and CAS, which is the creativity, activity, and service component of the IB Diploma program. In her free time, Amber likes to spend her time outdoors with her husband and their two young boys. The first question. Crepes, pancakes, French toast, and waffles. Rank them from best to worst. Waffles, then crepes, then pancakes, then French toast. If French toast is done properly, I can see how it could move up the list. <laughs> By far the inferior breakfast. What is the most interesting thing that you have in your wallet? Oh, this is gonna be cheesy, but I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> my husband's vows that he hand wrote. That's the most interesting thing that's in my wallet. Oh, this one's easy. What do you do for fun? One of the best things about living here where we do is that there's so much to do outside. I have two little boys, they're nine and six. So we play outside, we ride bikes in the winter time, we go skiing. We also have a really big, I don't know, I call it a luge run in our backyard, but I guess it's more like skeleton. We're definitely outside most of the time. What is the lowest grade you have ever been given and what class was it for? I failed my math diploma exam, my chemistry diploma exam, and my biology diploma exam. I passed the courses overall. I always tell kids that I did that um, so that they understand that you can still be a successful person having failed a very large exam. It will not define your life. Okay, that's bucket one. This is bucket two. This is where we have to see if I can see them ahead of time, but I can't. Oh, this is a long one. If there was a zombie apocalypse and only a few people survived, what's your special skill to help rebuild the world? I think I would be good at like organizing people to do necessary tasks. I'm not great at like building things. I'm okay, like if it's Ikea. So then I could organize people building the Ikea furniture. Done. What's the biggest adventure you've ever been on? During my undergrad, I went on an archeological dig in Greece. When I was doing my master's degree in Russian history, I was in Russia for six weeks and accessed like primary documents and, and that kind of stuff. So stayed in Moscow for a while afterwards. And that was a pretty big adventure too, I guess. You know what, I don't think I took anything from the archeological site. I definitely have like little rocks. It's sort of like a strange thing about me is that I'm an obsessive rock collector. When I was a kid, I used to have containers of round rocks. So now in the garden outside of my parents' house, there are still these big piles of round rocks. When are you most productive? Post coffee, but um, pre-lunch. <laughs> most of my moods are driven by food. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So it's really good that I work here because the dining hall makes me happy. Okay, that's it. All right. Do they get harder? Is that what this is about? What is the best way to explore human nature? Psychology, philosophy, or biology? Psychology. Because, and I'm gonna, the reason I give that answer is because it's like nature versus nurture, right? So there's enough elements of nature in psychology and also um, like environmental or ecological factors. I don't think that biology, like a biological explanation is enough. It's too deterministic. Um, and a philosophical approach you know, don't let Don Maxwell see this, but philosophy can also be kind of disconnected from, from like people in society. Uh, so that's why I pick psychology. What makes you feel inspired or like your best self? When I have a class and I sit with particularly the grade 12s and they show me not just that they know kind of what's happening with what we're talking about, but they they connect it to other things and we have like real adult academic conversations. I feel 
after I've had a class like that, like that I'm, you know, that I have oxygen, that I'm like, I'm inspired again and, and ready to kind of go on and, and take on the day. Oh boy, last question. Okay, so this seems like a follow-up. <laughs> what is the biggest question you tackle with your anthropology students? What does it mean to be a person? I hope that what the kids come up with is that um, that there's no one definition. Other people aren't failed attempts at being you. Like everyone is like a unique manifestation of the human spirit. So I think if the kids at the end of two years can say, you know what? What it means to be a person is different for every culture and in every context and, and to respect that, then, you know, I feel like I've done my job. Now what? It's empty. That's it. Woohoo! I feel excited.